Hello everybody, and welcome to my more or less new Let's Play, even though I've played this game twice before, but this is different. This is Roberta Williams, King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. Yeah, it's a mouthful. It is the 1990 SCI remake of the first King's Quest game. So, this is pretty much identical to the original version. So, um... Yeah, it's just going to be a graphical update, but there is going to be one major difference, which I'll point out when the time comes. It has to do with a certain very infamous puzzle in King's Quest. You should, you should probably know what I'm talking about with that puzzle. But yeah, this was, uh, I guess, during an age where they were wanting to uh, remake some of their original stuff in higher graphics. So they started with this one, and then they did some others that you've seen me play, like they did um, Police Quest 1 remake. Have I done that one? It's been so long, I don't even remember if I've done that one. I'll have to check my playlist. I know I did the first Space Quest remake. And then I guess they did Leisure Suit Larry. I don't really pay too much attention to that series. But yeah, of course, this is going to be post-commentary because I still can't get the uh, get my headphones to work at all on my computer. Hopefully I'll get some figured out, but this shouldn't be too big a deal. Anyway, let us get started on the actual game. And I'm going to click the introduction here in just a second. There it is. Man, look at those pretty graphics. You are Sir Graham, the bravest and most honorable knight in the troubled realm of Daventry. King Edward, the benevolent age ruler of Daventry, has summoned you to the castle for reasons unknown. Castle Guard, greeting Sir Graham, the king is expecting you. Allow me to ask you, you to his majesty's throne room. Thank you, Sir Knight. Raise the portcullis. Uh, reminds me of Quest for Glory whenever I see a portcullis like that in a game like this. I am at your service, my king. I am an old man, Sir Graham, perhaps too old to carry the weight of this crown. My bones ache, my hands tremble, I'm afraid my time on earth grows short. But enough about me. Great misfortunes have befallen Daventry since the last years ago of three magical treasures. I have chosen you, the finest knight in all of Daventry, to search for these lost treasures. Only then can this kingdom be restored to its former glory. And only then may I rest with the knowledge that my people are safe. The first treasure is a magic mirror that foretells the future. The second is a magical shield that protects the bear from all mortal harm. The third and last is an enchanted chest that is forever filled with gold. I know what I ask is difficult, nay perhaps impossible. The dangers are many. But you are brave and pure of heart, that is why I chose you to volunteer. If you succeed, you will inherit my crown and will rule the realm of Daventry as her rightful king. Go, Sir Graham, and know that the fate of Daventry lies in your hands. Take heart, my king. Oh, take heart, my king. I shall not fail you. Sorry, that was Graham talking. So yeah, the original didn't have this intro, so that's pretty cool. And then it starts back on this. So let's begin the game. Begin our adventure in earnest. Yeah, you can see instead of alligators, they have little sea serpents in the uh, in the moat there. <laughs> oh, what's cool about this is that uh, you right-click stuff and you look at it, so you don't have to type to look. Oh, wow! And this ends our adventure. Thank you for watching King's Quest. No, oh, I love this part. He's wearing through Graham's hat. So they don't like change really too much big, but like that um, sea serpent being replaced, uh, replacing the crocodile, that's definitely a big one. I 
So let's actually start now. He's standing outside of his castle with a moat. Guards protect the king's castle. Stone-faced guards have been trained not to converse with anybody. Yeah, I keep like clicking off before I can uh Oh yeah, I said to kiss guards like I I'll do that a lot where if I like encounter someone or something, I like to try to kiss it, and there's sometimes there are funny responses, but it's not as good as like King's Quest 4 or like other Sierra games. But sometimes there are funny responses. Yeah, aren't these graphics gorgeous. See, so you'll see me saving a lot. It's because, of course, there are lots of ways to die. So you're playing this game yourself, save a lot. And I'll just be looking a lot. And yeah, like I say, I keep clicking off of those way too soon. Because I forget that I'm going to have to, uh, of course, hey, Miko, that's my cat meowing at me. So let's push open this rock and see what we can get inside. And, of course, rock rolls downhill right into you. That's like the first unfair death in this game because it's like, how are you supposed to know that that's going to happen? So you have to get behind it. And you push the rock, and it opens a hole. Push the rock a few feet, filling a shallow hole underneath. And in the hole, there's a dagger. So we definitely want to get this. This is like something that's pretty necessary to beat the game. Find silver dagger with a very sharp edge. And you can see we get a score at the upper left. I do my best to get the top score, but there is something I neglect to do that misses me two points. It's not a big deal. You don't get any sort of big prize for getting a full score. But I'll point it out when the time comes. So we just uh, do some exploring, look around. I like about this is you can look at pretty much everything. Like, I do this later, but when the fish jumps up, you can type in to look at the fish. And we want to get some pebbles here. That'll be important for later. I actually don't even need to get these to beat the game, but I get them for the points. Because anything you pick up counts for points. Oh yeah, I save here because I want to see if like King Graham drowns or if he swims. I know he's swimming. He's a nice little swimming animation, which I guess swimming is like necessary for a very small part of the game at some point, so... Would it be weird if he couldn't swim here? So let's keep on exploring. Oh, there's like a little hut there, but um, we'll get back to that eventually. Oh yeah, I tried to like look at as much stuff as possible. Like, sorry if this stuff goes by super quick. It shouldn't be too hard to read though. They, uh, they didn't go, like, super in-depth with all these descriptions. Got a nice big tree here. Branches reaching up to the sky. I think it's at this point that I start remembering, oh yeah, I should probably leave these on screen a little bit longer. And again, in Quest for Glory fashion, we're going to do climb up that tree. And I think it takes me a second to find, like, the right position to do it in. <laughs> You're going to see me struggle here for a sec. Because everything's blocking me. I was trying to go around to the left side of the tree, but it wasn't letting me. So I go over to this side. And that's no good. I go behind it. We'll get there eventually. Don't worry. This isn't a long game. There's going to be just four episodes of this. I already have everything recorded as of now. Yeah, like I tried to like get to that left part to climb there, but there's just like no way to do it. But I eventually find my way. I just need to be just a little bit more over behind that rock there. 
we need to be kind of particular about these kinds of things. So we clamber on up the tree. And in classic Sierra fashion, we have a very narrow walkway to walk out on. With a nest over there. Like I said, very quest for glory. So I'm going to save. Luckily, if you fall down, you don't die, but I just didn't want to have to climb up again. So just try to get over to that nest. Good luck. There's a shimmering golden egg. So this is another thing you don't actually need to beat the game, but it gets you points. And if you like look at the items, you actually get a little picture of them, which is a cool little thing. And then you could just fall off because you don't actually die, which is surprising. Yeah, that looked like it hurt. Alright. Basically, we usually just find all these treasures just strewn around everywhere. Oh yeah, that door. We'll get to that door later. Yeah, I'm not sure if this like in this version of the game because I remember like there was some version where if you um <coughs> knock on the door, there was like a one in one hundred chance of some kind of Easter egg happening. I don't know which game exactly that was. I don't even think I ever got it. I think I tried to like a bunch of times. I just couldn't get it, so I have no idea what is actually supposed to happen. But oh well. I'm gonna walnut tree here. Which seems innocuous enough, but you'll see soon enough. I love the animation for the squirrels, like they did do a really good job with the animations here. Like from what I've heard, like I it's really hard to find information about this game or its release or anything. I I just heard, saw in passing somebody mention that this game didn't do very well commercially. I don't know why. Anyway, we get a walnut. Ordinary walnut, right? But if we open it up... And it's pure gold. Seriously, there's freaking gold everywhere in this kingdom. It's in the walnuts, it's in the bird nests. Like, where is this coming from? How is this kingdom struggling if gold is freaking everywhere? Wait, make sure to look at the squirrel when it's on screen. And it's pissed that I'm here because it wants to climb up the tree, even though there's nothing there for it to eat. It's all gold. Oh, and something else there on the ground. And this is like where like right clicking stuff really comes in handy because it's like you don't know what you're looking at. But if you like right click it, it'll tell you. Which with the original game, you just kind of had to like fumble around with like what exactly you wanted to say to like acknowledge that there's something on the ground. We'll look at the bowl, and it says fill on the inside. Hmm. So let's fill, and we get stew in there. It's interesting when you eat the stew. Luckily, like it doesn't um really penalize you if you eat it because you can fill it again but you do lose points for some reason oh yeah and I decided to look at the walnut so you can see the gold so like when I filled up the stew I had 28 points then when I ate it I got 26 again so if you do like the goal of the game is not to get rid of an item unless you're doing it for the exact express purpose that it needs to be used for like if you use the right item at the right time then you don't lose points. But like these treasures, there are times where you can like use those to like solve a puzzle or something, but you're not supposed to. Oh, and there's a little elf there. Seems friendly enough. So impressed by your friendliness, it responds by handing you an elegant little ring. I've had my eye on you, Sir Graham. He thinks you might enjoy this little trinket. For just a wee bit of time, it has the power to make you invisible. Nice. May it give you as much entertainment as it did me. I think that's what he said. I keep skipping past things. 
We got a little jewel ring. By the way, like I did go back and try to like kiss the elf, but it, I didn't get a very good response. It just says you can't get close enough to kiss it. You place the shimmering ring upon your finger. Nothing happens. I was gonna save here. And for some reason, if you jump while wearing the ring, the ring falls off and you can't get it again. So I was just showing that off. So that's why I did that. So let's restore here. And if you rub the ring, you turn invisible for a little bit. Now, unlike the original version of King's Quest, uh, you could rub the ring as many times as you want. In the original, you rub it once, then that's it. So you want to make sure you use it at a good spot. Um, I didn't want to risk it here, so I just restored to before I rubbed it. But yeah. So let's explore see what other treasures we can find. Right now, we're just kind of collecting things to help in the actual quest. We'll, uh, we'll get the actual treasures of Daventry soon enough. So let's see what there is to find. Well, that's a pretty little place. See, so yeah, I love it. It's just anything that's on screen, you can look at it. So we look and see some clovers there. So let's grab one. Oh, a little bit closer. And there it is. Now, in my whole life, I've never actually found a four leaf clover. I found five leaf leaves ones all the time, but never four. I don't know why they're supposed to be so lucky, but I'm sure there's some sort of history behind that. All right, nothing too special here. The cool thing about Daventry is that if you walk far enough north, it'll actually wrap around north and to south. Oh, there's a cave over there. But not east and west, and there's a reason for that. Oh, look at that little goat. We'll deal with the little goatee soon enough. Let's just keep on exploring. Ooh. An old stone well. So we could actually deal with what's in the well right now, but I think I'll leave that alone for now. Some more stuff I want to collect first. Serene Mountain Lake. Diamond Tree is a very pretty place. Anyway, we're at the front of that uh, cottage we saw earlier. And this is where I'll end things off. So, will we be able to get the three treasures of Diamond Tree? The shield, the chest, and the third one, which I forgot. Well, the mirror. There we go. <laughs> we'll find out next time on Let's Play King's Quest 1. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.